This is a production of Florida State University. Hello and welcome to another edition of FSU Headlines coming to you from the campus of Florida State University. I'm your host, Dennis Schnitker. Thanks for joining me. Florida State University is one of the nation's top 20 public institutions. That's according to U.S. News and World Report's just released annual college rankings for the year 2021. U.S. News and World Report ranks Florida State number 19 among all public universities in the country. This is the second consecutive year Florida State is placed in the top 20. I'm proud of our team. I'm proud of the faculty members. I'm proud of the great students that we've attracted over the last several years. You know, 62,000 students applied to go to Florida State University last year. I think that's a reflection of where we are, uh, the prestige that the university has earned over the years. And uh, I couldn't be prouder of our entire team, particularly our faculty and our students. While the top 20 ranking is a validation of the university's national prominence, Florida State's sole focus isn't rankings. Provost and Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs Sally McRory points to the university's continued emphasis on student success. We have remained uh, laser focused on making sure that our students have the best opportunities to uh, succeed, not only in the classes and the research opportunities that they have, uh, while they're students here, but also in multiple engagement opportunities throughout campus and beyond. And in particular, keeping them on track so that they have a timely graduation. And the new ranking appears in U.S. News & World Report's Best Colleges 2021 Guidebook. Well, U.S. News also ranks specific academic programs, and this year Florida State University's undergraduate business and engineering programs performed exceptionally well. The FAMU FSU College of Engineering vaulted 37 spots to number 40 among public universities. The college's rise was the highest of any engineering institution and more than double that of any other. The FAMU FSU College of Engineering is the only shared college of engineering in the nation. The unique collaboration is a win-win for both universities and their students. It was a very bold move by the state to create this college. It wasn't always clear to everybody why they did that, but I think now we can see the, the prescience of that, especially in the world today that we talk about with social justice, that this is a college which is pioneering top-notch, excellent engineering education, and a very diverse, inclusive group of students, which is where we all want to be in the future. The FSU College of Business also continued its upward climb in the national rankings, moving up three places to number 28 among public universities and up six spots to number 44 among all national universities. Virtually every program in the College of Business is in the top 30. Most programs are in the top 25. Many programs are in the top 10, and some programs are in the top five. And that, that's pretty remarkable for a business school of, uh, of our stature and, and, frankly, youth. We have only been a business school since 1950, so that's pretty unusual to be this highly ranked. And in other news from campus, Florida State University recently bestowed the James D. Westcott Distinguished Service Medal on not one, but two deserving individuals. The Westcott Medal is the highest distinction Florida State University presents. Professor Emerita Myra Hurt became only the ninth recipient of the Westcott Medal during a live stream ceremony held at the College of Medicine. Hurt is the first to receive the medal in 11 years. Myra Hurt, your name is synonymous with the Florida State University College of Medicine whose hallways, research labs, and classrooms carry your DNA. Indeed, this college has nearly 1,500 alumni physicians to date, hail from a wonderfully diverse cross-section of society, in itself a remarkable note for those familiar with medical education. And they've already provided compassionate care for more than a million patients across the nation. Access to care was not always a birthright. Yet this college might not exist, save for your fearlessness, leadership, and failure is not an option approach to taking on almost insurmountable challenges. Hurt retired earlier in 2020 after more than 33 years of service to Florida State. Perhaps her most notable accomplishment was helping to establish FSU's College of Medicine, the nation's first new accredited medical school of the 21st century. Hurt's efforts have shaped the medical education of nearly 1,500 new physicians to date. 
And as I mentioned, a second honoree joined the Westcott Medal ranks, University President Emeritus Talbot Sandy Dallenbert. Current Florida State University President John Thrasher awarded the medal posthumously during a private ceremony at the FSU College of Law. I'm John Thrasher, I'm president of Florida State University and uh, I want to wish you all a good morning. James D. Westcott Distinguished Service Medal is a rare and extraordinary recognition presented only, only to the most exceptional individuals. It's, a, it's an opportunity that I have to recognize uh, President Dallenberg, and I hope, uh, hope this will just, uh, his family will appreciate that Florida State uh, holds him in the highest regard, and uh, we're honored here today to have his family here and to honor him. I'm proud to award the Westcott Medal to President Emeritus Talbot Sandy Dallenberg. Patsy, it's a great honor to bestow this uh, award on Sandy. So would you please join Sally and I for the presentation. It means so much to me and to the Dallenbert family that this university, which Sandy cherished, has chosen to put him among the company of Westcott Medal holders. He's just a special person in my heart and a special person uh, in the life of Florida State University. He was glad that his contributions meant something to this university. I feel so happy to have seen people who loved Sandy and whom Sandy loved as his wife and I, someone who, who loved him dearly. I'm glad that other people loved him too. The Florida State University Police Department, or FSUPD, works to keep our campus safe every day, and that includes our streets and sidewalks. The department's commitment to traffic and pedestrian safety was recently recognized by the Florida Law Enforcement Liaison Program. FSUPD placed first in traffic safety in the Champions category of the 2020 Florida Law Enforcement Challenge Awards. FSU Police Chief Terry Brown recently accepted the award at Police Department's headquarters. The award recognizes FSUPD's efforts in seatbelt usage, pedestrian safety, distracted driving enforcement, impaired driving enforcement, and much more. It's a huge deal for the, the, the Florida Law Enforcement Traffic Safety Challenge is separated into category classes. And then those category classes is, is where you usually place. Last year, FSU Police Department placed in uh, the top of their class, which put them in a champions class. And so of all the champions that won last year, they won first place against all the champions from the previous year. So they are the best of the best in the state of Florida. As the nation observes National Hispanic Heritage Month, the Florida State University and Tallahassee communities recently gathered virtually for the second annual Latinx Cultural Celebration. Florida State's Latinx celebration was first held last year in the Ruby Diamond Concert Hall. The event is designed to bring the university and Tallahassee communities together to acknowledge the history and significant contributions of the Latinx community. This year's watch party style event had the same goal, featuring award presentations, performances, cultural reflections, and more. Live performances will return to Florida's capital city thanks to FSU's opening nights. A new season of the Fine and Performing Arts series returns with an emphasis on safety as well as an eclectic lineup of performances. Audiences can expect to see familiar favorites such as the longtime drummer for Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band, Max Weinberg, Grammy Award winning blues musician Keb Moe, humorist Gene Robertson, and the great pop phenomena, ABBA, the concert. The lineup also features up and coming artists, including the post-funk band, Streetlight Cadence. A special attraction this year is Florida's finest series, featuring talented artists from across the state. I think one of the key things that people are looking forward to is just getting together again with friends and neighbors, and even people who you share something with in terms of a common interest, whether it be a particular jazz artist or a blues artist or just coming together to share an evening out. Most of this year's performances will be held off campus and seating will be arranged to allow for social distancing. You can view the full season lineup at openingnights.fsu.edu. Well, coming up next on FSU Headlines, we'll visit Florida State University's National High Magnetic Field Laboratory 
and we'll show you how MagLab scientists are making new discoveries about the universe when FSU Headlines continues in a moment. At Florida State University, we're proving that students from all walks of life can achieve at the highest levels. We're proving that intellect, creativity, service, and daring matter. We're proving the next generation can do more than dream of a better world. They can make it happen. We are Florida State University. When you buy a Florida State University license plate, you're not just showing your school spirit. You're supporting students like us. In the lab, in the classroom, and in the library. Putting this tag on your vehicle helps Florida State students achieve their dreams. So show your pride. Purchase an FSU license plate today. Welcome back to Florida State University and to FSU Headlines. I'm Dennis Schnitker. About 40 miles south of here on the coast of the Gulf of Mexico, researchers at Florida State University's Coastal and Marine Laboratory explore one of the most remarkably diverse and productive ecosystems in the nation. The lab's research and outreach missions advance marine ecosystem science and address questions that are both local and global in scope. Longtime biologist Joel Trexler will now lead those missions as the Marine Lab's new director. I'm pretty excited about uh, working with the staff and the scientists uh, uh, at the laboratory and um, trying to uh, help them uh, uh, realize their potential and, and uh, you know, which I think is really, really great and keep the lab on the trajectory it's already on and, and moving forward. And Joel Trexler comes to FSU from Florida International University, where he served as director of the Marine Science Program. Trexler spent almost three decades there researching the wetland ecosystem of the Everglades in South Florida. Welcome aboard, Dr. Trexler. A $1.5 million grant from the U.S. Department of Energy is helping scientists at Florida State's National High Magnetic Field Laboratory develop the next generation of superconductors. The three-year grant will allow the FSU research team to continue their work developing a promising superconductor, which is just now entering accelerator use at CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research. In particular at the moment, the world's biggest accelerator is the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. And they are slowly beginning to put niobium-310 magnets into that. And they have uh, uh, ideas to create an immensely more powerful, something like 15 times more powerful uh, machine to really get to the further down into the structure of matter. To do that, they need a much bigger tunnel and a much stronger magnets. The project poses a great engineering challenge, but the MagLab research team is confident that tomorrow's super magnets can be built today. We should be really influencing, uh, frankly, uh, the future of this technology and science. And at some level, you know, breaking apart the fundamental particles of nature, understanding the forces that exist behind them is one of the most exciting things one can possibly do. Life for the people of Puerto Rico hasn't been the same since Hurricane Maria devastated the island in 2017. Now, a recent Florida State University study finds Puerto Rico may not fully recover for decades. September 2017, Hurricane Maria ravages Puerto Rico and leaves catastrophic damage in its wake. While much of the devastation was apparent after the storm, a new study from Florida State University sociologist Matt Hauer shows that the storm also left less obvious long-term impacts on the island's population. We predicted that the island would lose an additional uh, right around 200,000 more people um, after the hurricanes in, in the rather anemic federal response uh, compared to if we would have done the projection beforehand, before the hurricanes hit the island. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a rather significant change in, in the, the trajectory of, 
the island's population over time. Professor Hauer hopes these new insights serve as a lesson for future storms and brings more attention to an island still on the mend. It really speaks to uh, the island needing more attention to help bring those numbers up. Um, it might mean changes in retirement age for individuals on, on the island. People might have to work for considerably longer um, than, than they would have otherwise. Um, and, and, and really, it, it definitely speaks toward um, more attention that needs to be paid to the island itself. Well, coming up next on FSU Headlines, the coronavirus pandemic has produced unprecedented changes to life as we know it. We'll show you how Florida State student athletes confronted the suspension of sporting events when FSU Headlines continues in a moment. Welcome back to FSU Headlines, I'm Dennis Schnitker. As the public health threat of COVID-19 began to spread throughout the United States in the early months of 2020, the NCAA Board of Directors was forced to make a tough decision for all of college athletics. Reporter Madison Fitzpatrick has more. Today, NCAA President Mark Emmert and the Board of Governors canceled the Division I men's and women's 2020 basketball tournaments, as well as all remaining winter and spring NCAA championships. This decision is based on the evolving COVID-19 public health threat. With this announcement, all NCAA collegiate sports nationwide were officially canceled, and with that, so too were the national championship goals of FSU's student athletes. Well, when the announcement was canceled, um, you know, for me, I still believe that we had so much in us um, going into the NCAA tournament. And, you know, at basketball, like, you're working year round, you're working hard year round. So, like, it's like preparing for something and then it not even happening. Um, that was a big blow. It was devastating. Uh, that day, when I think about it, I, it was kind of like our career was just come to a complete stop. My heart broke for our seniors because all of the unknown, um, it really got to us and they thought that their last year at FSU was ripped away from them without any control or any say. We were all extremely like, frustrated, uh, sad, angry. I mean, there was plenty of emotions, but at the end of the day, it was for our own safety, the social safety, the players and everybody. So we understand. Going from relentless training and the pursuit of a national championship to no longer having that end goal be an option, the athletes were able to learn an important lesson and gain perspective, even when it seemed all hope was lost. Anything can happen, so we need to be grateful and blessed for the opportunities that we do have because, you know, things happen that are way bigger than basketball. It's just crazy how, how much effort and work we put into this and for, it to be just taken away from you. I think that we just need to soak up every moment, every 6 a.m. lift, all of the hard, all of the good, all the fun, because these are our best friends and the best times of our lives. So just enjoying the moments now. With a newfound appreciation for the opportunity to play the sport they love, these FSU student athletes head into the next season with motivation to finish what they started. So I think for my next, for my senior year, I will, um, you know, just appreciate every every match we play, every moment I get, uh, and uh, finish off, you know, the way the way we started last season. We have the same mindset. We want to try to go as strong as we can. To, uh, attack day by day. Yeah, get better every day and see what the end result will be. Definitely uh, winning more banners, a couple of banners, winning championships. Through perspective, trust in each other, and fueled with a newfound passion to reach their goals, Florida State's student athletes will continue to push through and rise above this year's hardships. I'm Madison Fitzpatrick reporting. Okay, thank you, Madison. A few weeks after college sports was abruptly halted, the Division I Council granted an extra year of eligibility to every student athlete with a spring season. So stay tuned, more on this story to come. Moving on, Florida State University's John Pack is already a major figure on the collegiate golf scene. 
Now the Florida State Junior is one step closer to a pro golf career after a stellar outing at the 2020 U.S. Open. Reporter Tucker Pierce has the story. John Pop, consensus All-American, defending ACC champion, PGA University top-ranked college golfer, and now the fourth Seminole since 2009 to qualify for the U.S. Open. It means the world to me. I've always been, you know, trying to get that first start on any PGA Tour event. I've been trying my whole life, and for my first PGA Tour start to be the U.S. Open, I mean, it's something you don't really think will ever happen. A New Jersey native, the excitement started back home when John first learned he qualified with some help from his family. I wasn't sleeping very well, so um, I woke up pretty early, and I went for a run with my brother, and I came back, and my parents were like banging on the window and they're like, you got in, this and that, and they're screaming. And yeah, that was kind of how I found out the moment it happened. With Wingfoot Golf Club located only an hour away from John's hometown, the young amateur has some experience on this year's venue. I played it about seven years ago. So yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's so close to home. So I kind of feel like a little home tournament. With the US Open being one of golf's four major championships, challenges will be met across the board for the aspiring pro. I know it'll be like a, a good test of my golf game. I'm playing against the best players in the world and you know one of the hardest golf courses in the world. So I'm, I'm just excited to see what how my golf game will fare out on such a difficult golf course. He's experience to learn from it. And he just keeps walking up the ladder. So, um, those type of guys, um, you know, always, always keep improving and their opportunities are endless. Seeing success in college since his freshman year at FSU, experience at the next level is what John has his sights set on. I think one of the biggest goals I have is just to gain some experience out there. And I haven't really thought about placement finishes. Um, but yeah, I just, I just want to learn as much as I can when I get there. And for John Pock, a Florida State Seminole competing on one of golf's biggest stages, participating in his first PGA Tour event at the U.S. Open is sure to be the experience of a lifetime. I'm Tucker Pierce reporting. You know, many high school athletes dream of playing D1 college football, but one Florida State University walk-on wasn't taking no for an answer. Reporter Jacqueline Kasick has the story. Growing up in Tallahassee was a lot of fun for Marshall Heileman. Going from Saturday flag football to Seminole football games with his family was very special. He knew where he wanted to be. He just sets an example um, of what, what it really means to be a defensive back at Florida State. What our program is based on is, uh, is sacrificing, and uh, he is constantly sacrificing for his teammates. But Marshall's journey to become a Seminole wasn't easy. He started out at Southeastern University his freshman year, then moved back to Tallahassee due to family issues. I told my brother, I, I gotta go back to Tallahassee, and I said, no matter how hard the road gets, I will never give up. After four denied attempts, Marshall finally received his acceptance letter in May of 2019, giving him the opportunity to try out during the summer football training camp. I, I just broke down. It was, it was so special because I knew that now, like that was one door I needed to open to go to the next door that I really wanted to be. So that was just one step closer. Unfortunately, Marshall's tryout didn't go as planned. I guess the person who was supposed to talk to me comes up to me and says, I don't know who you are. We don't have any information on you. You're gonna have to come back in January. What really hurt them most was not being told no, but having to tell those who really believed in me that I didn't make it. The one thing I remember he said to me was that it's time to work even harder. It was just a whole different mindset. He worked 10 times harder than I've ever seen him work before. 
I had a list of goals I wanted to do. I had a workout program I was going to get on, and I, I wrote, I remember I wanted to run a 4 4 40, and I knew if I wasn't fast, I'd have no chance. Marshall also spent many late nights sitting here at the Unconquered Statue, praying for the strength and courage to never give up and to remember the promise he made to himself and those around him. Football was like my getaway. It was like my happy place almost. And when I had that taken away from me, I, 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 that was all I wanted. After his second tryout, Marshall received the phone call he had been waiting for since he was five years old. Coach Locke called me, and Coach Locke, you know, he said, he informed me that I, I was one of the guys they selected. Yeah, I just got goosebumps thinking about it. Um, you know, he's, you know, he's such a hard worker, and he's probably one of the most deserving people that I know. People always ask, hey, you know, how'd you do it? And then I get to share my story with them and what I went through personally, and being told no and just keep getting denied, that makes the journey so special. Marshall tells his story to impact others and to keep kids dreaming. He pours everything he has into whatever he has to do. That's what's so special about Marshall is whether he knows it or not, he's leading. It's hard for me to go to sleep at night no matter how tired I am because I'm so excited to get up the next day and come to Florida State football. I get to put on that helmet. It's, it's, it's bigger than me. It's special, but it's bigger than me. From Tallahassee to Orlando and back, to never letting himself down or others, looking back on it all, he said his journey was all part of the fun. As a Florida State football player, Marshall Heileman has truly found his home. I'm Jacqueline Kissick reporting. Well, that's going to do it for the October edition of FSU Headlines. Remember, you can always keep up with Florida State University online at news.fsu.edu. It's there you'll find articles, video, and radio stories all about Florida State University. For everyone here at Florida State, I'm Dennis Schnitker. Thanks for joining us. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay happy. We'll see you next time.